Oh, it's the horse. Good morning and welcome to day 10 of Vlogmas. My name is Tiffany, if we haven't met before, and if you're returning, welcome back. Um, it is Sunday and we are homesick. Poor Hudson's fever has continued um, through the night and into this morning. So he and I are gonna stay home from church and um, John will go in our stead, so. So we have a cozy fire going, Hudson and I, and I'll probably do a little knitting and some spinning. So I wanted to show you my spinning project that I'm currently working on. I started it uh, yesterday evening, so I haven't shown it before. This braid of yarn is from Rusty Spur Creations, the same uh, dyer that did the other one, the green one. So this, as you can see, is mostly blue with some gray and orange. This one is the same Tweety base. Um, it has uh, wool mainly, and then it has Donegal Tweed in it. So I really like the pop of orange in this sea of blue. I'm excited to see how it's going to spin up. What I am doing is I'm starting at the, so I've got the whole braid here. Normally you would section it off in at least thirds, if not more. Um, but I want to spin, I'm gonna chain ply. So what that means is, um, all of the color I'm going to chain is going to be the same. And then it's going to go into the next color and be the same for a period of time. Now on this, you can see that there is a lot of this red and orange mixed with the gray. So um, that'll be interesting chain plied. But like this deep blue here, there's a huge section of blue that I'll be able that I'll be able to spin um, all together. So as I'm chain plying, there'll be a huge section of blue, huge section of orange, and so on. So on that note, my husband sent me down to the yarn shop, Paradise Fiber, and said, "Hey, pick out a spindle." As you all know, I spin wool on my wheel. It is the Ashford Kiwi. And uh, my husband bought it a, a couple of years ago, maybe three. I think it was during COVID, maybe. It's kind of recalling to my memory. But um, he heard me talk about in a vlog um, a couple days ago. Andrea Mowry has a 100 days of spinning, but you have to do it on a spindle. So he said, go down to Paradise and get one. Well, they have a ton there, but these particular ones were on sale. This is the multi wood saucer drop spindle. And this is what it looks like. I'm totally kidding. It comes wrapped, which is nice, um, and would be helpful if I had some scissors to cut open the um, tape, maybe. So I did notice they had some on sale, and there was a reason they were on sale. They had, uh, the tip was broken, and, um, oh, these are nice. Thanks, dear. Um, he's getting ready to head off to church, so next time I'll have to get up when I need help. <laughs> um, so I did notice that a couple of them were damaged, but they were also open. So they were in this bag, but they were just, they weren't padded like this. So I decided to go in blind, um, 
and get one that was uh, padded. So that's what I did. And I'm hoping it's a good one. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are, they're connoisseurs of drop spindles and they only buy from, you know, a reputable, not a reputable, um, a known uh, wheel, I mean, uh, spindle maker. Oh, this is nice. I mean, for my first spindle, what do you think? I think it's nice. It's heavy on the bottom. Not 100% sure how to spin it. Oh, what's interesting. You must spin it this way. Hmm. And then put the yarn here. Well, that'll be fun to explore. This is what it looks like from this side. It's very pretty. I like the stripes. So that'll be fun to learn how to do that. I might have to watch a video. Or my husband could show me. He's the goat on everything. So um, yeah. Okay. So there's the spindle. And it does say on here Paradise Fiber on the shaft here. So, yeah. Okay. That was fun to open. Thank you, sweetie. Um, while we're doing that, let's open the advent. This is day 10. And I had my husband pick it up off the tree. Oh. This color is the sun, which we have none of. We have snow. That's very pretty. Reminds me of the sun. Okay. So, an update on my knitting. I am almost to round, let's see. Again, this is the field sweater by Camilla Vad. I am in the middle of a row because why not? Poor guy. He's not feeling too hot. Um, yes, I am in the middle of a row. I am on round where I'm just knitting before separating for sleeves. I am on, I'm almost to round 15 and I need to go to 18. Um, 18 rows. So I'm almost there and then we'll split for sleeves. I am knitting this in my own hand dyed yarn, Blue Moon. It is a worsted weight, 100% superwash. And I love it. Are you leaving? Yeah. No, okay. So yesterday's vlog, I talked about my husband and I showed him a little bit. Um, doing some leather working and he finished his project. I wanted to share it with you all What do you think <laughs> So this is um, a leather bag well more like a purse and um, it has two pockets. It has raw edges, so it's very rustic. I love that. It has a pocket here on the um, a pocket here on the outside, as well as hold on here, as well as the inside. He also made um, earrings for the gal. This is a Christmas gift. So um, the husband's going all out. He's, he's going to uh, score some big wins here <laughs> with his wife. 
And then there's also a keychain down here that attaches. So he's very gifted with his leather working and he always does it hand stitched, which is beautiful. And I myself have um, two bags that he's made for me. So I feel very blessed. Okay. So that's it for um, this morning. I'm going to, again, do a little bit of spinning and a little bit of knitting um, and a lot of hugging on my son while he's sick. So I hope you guys have a great Sunday morning and I'll see you this afternoon. Sunday evening and I'm checking back in with you the last time for today. I have tried out my husband's spindle that he got me um, and as you can see I have some fiber on here. Now this was really challenging um, for me and so I tried a couple different um, techniques. One sitting so that the spindle wouldn't fall as far when it disconnected um, and the other one standing and so standing I'll show a video here I um, dropped the spindle quite a few times so I was getting a little frustrated and decided to 
um, look on YouTube for a tutorial. I found Jillian Eve and um, I've followed her in the past different things that she was doing um, and so I knew that she had tutorials on there. Sure enough she had one for a drop spindle and actually she talked about how most people that have this type of a spindle they do it in their lap. So what happens is they create a twist um, uh, she said, you know, several inches or so, uh, they create a twist, Whoop. not like that. See, this, this has been happening multiple times in the training. Okay. They create a twist and then they stick it in their lap and they draft the twist into the fiber okay just like that I guess I should get more oh by the way I'm using baby alpaca roving which is the only one I had on hand besides the other stuff that I'm working with so she recommended not using a um, slippery fiber that's what this is this is a slippery fiber okay so um, so most people start off that way and then they um, they'll draft it in to the fiber, pulling the fiber out to however thin you want it. See am I okay. So this is the other problem is I haven't quite figured out how to attach I thought you could do it you know spin it and attach it but it isn't always um, the most um, the easiest to do. I thought you needed to have like an open, open fiber and open fiber. Well, that's the other thing is you can't have too much here or else it falls in and um, into the okay that seemed to work uh, so she did suggest that now that I've got this hooked is that you spin create twist in there and then draft it into I don't know if you can see that the twist is pulling into and then when it's no longer twisting you do it again and she said most people with this type of spindle that's how they start out okay and then, thank you, John. Uh, so then from there, she said, as you build confidence, you dangle it. And um, that is more, oh, another thing is that while you're holding your roving, you need to not have a death grip, but to hold it loosely. Um, so that that's that's good. Don't death grip it. Um, another thing I was doing is I was holding the fiber up like this, and the weight of it was drafting it out, and then it would drop 
because it would whoop, like that. So um, she said to hold it to the side and use your pinky to hold to support the spindle. So like this. Oh, that's going to be a little thin. keeps hitting my knees because that's okay so see Ooh. it's a lot harder than it looks that's all I can say although my husband said oh would you feel bad if I tried it and then did better than you and I said of course I would I don't feel like I'm um, doing this justice showing you but that is kind of what I am learning I was doing it off to the side like this okay that's pretty good Okay, let's see if we can connect this. That's the other thing is um, because it falls off all the time, how do you connect it oh, really thin there? How do you connect it? You kind of have to get your flow going. Oh, see there, that's pretty good. But see, now it's stopped spinning. <laughs> the other thing is to keep spinning. And if you, this is what I've been doing. If I hit my knee, then it'll bounce and start spinning the other direction. That is a no-go. You do not want that. See, and I'm death gripping. And I need to not do that. Don't death grip, have a really loose hand and just slowly draft out what you want. Oh, that's pretty good still, but. But then if it bounces off the floor because I'm sitting, then, um, you know, it will cause it to spin the other direction. There we go, that was pretty good. Don't hit the floor. Oh, but it stopped spinning. So once you get a certain, you know, amount on there, the only thing you can do is spin it around. That's pretty good. And you kind of just a steady pace, you know. And no death grip. I keep having to remind myself that. Don't hold a death grip on the fiber. If you do that, it can't go through. See, it hit my knee, and then it stopped spinning. Oh, and I'm death gripping it here. It's never good. Oh man, now it's going the opposite direction. <sighs> hit my knee again. So, yeah, it's um, not for the faint of heart. Although my husband thinks he can do it, no problem.
I feel like this could be a great um, hobby and um, would be fun to, you know, do while traveling or something. Because you can do it in pretty tight spaces, kind of like knitting. The other thing is my arms are tired because they're up in the air the whole time, pretty much. So, a great arm workout. My sister would know. <laughs> she actually does drop spindle too. Um, that's what she does. I don't think she has a wheel. Um, but, uh, yeah, so she just stands and spins wherever, whatever, you know, activity she's at. So that is the introduction to drop spindle from my standpoint. <laughs> is it's a uh, my husband and I were actually talking about this earlier. Like, you know, it seems easier than learning how to spin on a wheel. Well, only because I learned on a wheel, and so I understand now what drafting is, what it should look like, and when um, when I, you know, I think if I had started with the drop spindle, it would have been just as frustrating. You know, getting the, the thicker yarn and the really thin and all that, so. All right. This is where I'm going to leave you for tonight. I hope you all had a great, we had a very lazy Sunday. Uh, Hudson laid on the couch all day and I learned how to spin, drop spindle. I didn't spin on my wheel at all. So I might have to do that a little bit later. Uh, oh, I, um, What did I do? I uh, split for sleeves on my on my sweater. Harder me. Hmm. That's what happens when it gets a little too long. I did split for sleeves on my sweater, and I did this hack that I hope will add a little bit more ease through the bust area. Um, I did some German short rows. Um, this alpaca is tickling my nose. Pardon me. Uh, I did some short rows in the front to kind of maybe make it not so snug around my um, bust. So we'll see if that helps in that regard. Um, and then go from there. I do want to show you that real quick before I go. So let me finish out this fiber. I'm almost to the floor. Ah, okay, and it stopped. hitting my knee. Okay, last little bit. fuzzy there but I'm gonna be done with this for tonight because uh, my arms are tired truthfully okay let me show you my sweater this is going to be the front without dropping any stitches
we go. Here's the armholes. They're on hold until I'm done with the body. And then I'll pick up for sleeves. There we go. All right, so that's the field sweater. I'm using my own hand-dyed yarn, Wayta Valley Fiber Co. You can find that on Etsy. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening and I'll see you Monday.